the microbes to eat. Otherwise, they're, they're going to die. And so that's one thing you have to focus on. And that's what we focus on. We don't focus on just feeding the plant, but rather feeding the soil and letting the soil feed the plant. So all that fertilizer that you get, whether it's phosphorus, potassium, it's going to be mine stuff. And so it's going to take longer to break down. Um, and, you know, like the stuff that we get, we get, it comes out of a mine in New Mexico. It's blended down there. They ship it up here in tote bags. Um, it was like, I think this year, some of the stuff that, that, that we got was like a, a 30, a three way blend. It had, um, phos, potassium, and then humates. Humates is the remains of dead plants and animals, um, that have been compressed to the point where it didn't turn to coal. And, but it's, it's, it's not hard as coal is. But it's still, it contains trace elements and everything like that. And when we spread that on our field, you could literally, within so many days, you could see that stuff. It looks like it's sinking into the soil, but it's not. It's what's happening is the microbes are, the biology in the soil is eating that up and it's pulling it into the soil. Like it's food, it's eating it. You know, it's like we're hungry, we're waking up in the spring, oh, we need some food, you know. Um, you need that. And. So you're gonna want want to do that. You can you can. There's are some biological um, stuff that you can you can put on your ground too. We haven't gotten any, but you know primarily because we're using manure. But um, but if you're gonna put any biological stuff in your soil, you have to put food for the biology. Otherwise, it's just gonna die, and it's not gonna. You're gonna have spent all that money for nothing. But um, the guy that we work with for our fertilizer. Um, his company that he works with he's just an independent guy well he does kind of work with somebody else um, but for the most part he's independent his company is called Ag Vantage and he he just covers basically a four state air region or four state area he covers North Dakota South Dakota Minnesota Nebraska a little bit of Nebraska and a little bit of Iowa and um, that's what who we that's who we go with um, there's other, another company that's called Pedogenesis. They're lo located in Campbell, Minnesota. Um, there's Midwest BioAg. They're, they're located in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Um, basically, that's all I know regionally. I don't know where you can get other ones. It depends on your region. The best thing to do is if you have, um, do you know of an organic farmer in your area? Contact them, um, ask them where they get their fertilizer from. Um, like I say, I know in in my region where I live, where you know we can get access to our fertilizer. You know, I I know where we get ours. You know, so it's hard to say where you can get it. You know, it depends on what part of the country you're living in. Um, it might it may vary. So, um, but um, so anyways, and I think I covered. So that's that's the fertilizer aspect of it. Um. And then I covered kind of the seed already. <coughs> um, what else here? Weed control. Weed control. There are d different methods for weed control. Um, I, I know it depends on what your your opera operation is. If you're a grain farmer, I would, you know, I would highly recommend trying to some way incorporate alfalfa into your operation. If you can, if you can't, that's fine. But alfalfa is a very good weed suppressor. It really is. When... Um, when we break up a hay field every year, um, we, like I say, we plow it under the fields are the corn field is very clean for the most part, you know, depending on the year, you know, maybe if you couldn't get out and cultivate it cause it was wet or rainy or something, but if you get out and you get it cultivated right away when the corn is tall enough, I mean, some people will go out and rotary hole their corn. You know, if you don't know what a rotary hole is, look it up on, or on YouTube and you'll find out. Um, but some people will go out and rotary hole their corn. We don't, well, we, we tried to not stir up the soil any more than we have to. So like I say, we go, we, we just basically cultivate our corn fields once. I know some people might think, well, you only cultivate your corn fields once. Yes. If it's on a fell for break and we only cultivate it once because we don't want to go out and cultivate it because any more than we have to, because when you go out the second time and cultivate it, the corn is about yay high. The roots are spread out further, and not only that, but that's the time of the season when, at least around here, when we get not as much rainfall. So all you're doing is drying up the soil, you're cutting your roots, and you don't want to do it. The less you can you can go through your crops, the better. Um, so we usually get by a cultivator of corn just once, and it's pretty pretty clean. It's not weed free. Um, 
if you're organic you're gonna if you're gonna go organic you're gonna have to accept that there's gonna be weeds if you can get 90 percent weed control out in your field you're doing pretty darn good uh, most of the time you're probably gonna average 70 percent weed control in your fields you know maybe even less than that depends on what kind of crop you're growing um so like for the corn like i said that's what we do um there are other options that you can do for corn you could you could have maybe if you had rye um like cereal rye um, rye is a good thing for weed control because it, it suppresses grasses grass weeds you can't plant corn in the rye standing rye it just won't work because the rye produces a chemical i can't think of the name of that chemical now but it produces a, a chemical in the ground that basically won't let any grass other anything other that's grass grow in there like corn pigeon grass or whatever grass you plant it is it will not grow you have to kill it first before you can plant into it so what you can do is like some people do that like maybe they had um soybeans that particular year the next year they're going to go into corn and that fall that fall I'll go out there and seed it down to rye um i can't think of how many pounds an acre but you know I don't know if you could do like 30, 30 pounds, 40 pounds an acre maybe, and whatever. I'm not sure what it, what it would be for, for rye. It might be higher than that. I don't know. <clears throat> but in the spring, you'd go out there and you'd work it in. You can either, if you're a dairy farmer, you can chop it off. If you're just a grain farmer, you could go out there and work it in. Disc the heck out of You know, you have to disc it to kill it. Probably more than once. But it's going to be clean. You know, there are different options. Um, as far as small grain goes, and that's one thing too i've got to emphasize too when you go organic is you have to do crop rotation if you were doing a corn soybean rotation if you're a grain farm you can't do that anymore you got to get three crops in there it doesn't matter the order that you do it in it could be you know corn soybeans wheat or rye or barley or whatever but it's got to be a, a rotation in there um you cannot do and if you're grain farming you can't do like corn and corn but if you're dairy farming they let you do that because they know you need the feed the feed actually we're going to do a field this year that is um going to be corn and corn this is because of the way the rotation works out but you have to rotate your crops you cannot do just corn and soybeans so yeah that might be another thing that you're thinking about yeah no corn no corn soybean rotation it's going to be it's going to be you know it's going to be corn beans wheat and then you know whatever how you ever do it again or whatever so yeah, so as far as small grain, um, the earlier you can get it in the season, the better. The earlier, yes. And because it's cooler, small grains like, like oats or wheat, they do better in cool weather. And it's going to grow up fast. It's going to smother out the weeds. Um, there is something that you can do to help control the weeds in there. Um, it's, a, it's a machine they, that's called, um, it, it's built over in Sweden. <coughs> Um, I'm trying to think. Boy. What is it called? Hmm. It's built over in Sweden and it's called something now. It, it's like a little thing. It, it's got knives on it. Um. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I can't think of the name of it. But if somebody else out there knows what I'm talking about put it down in the comment section it will come to me but anyways yeah you can go out there with the machine it will, it will cut all the weeds out but it will not it will not cut the small grain out um, and you can only do it when that small grain is so high <coughs> like if you have thistles out there too it will take out the thistles and like your soybeans um, you're probably going to have to cultivate them or what there is some experimentation depending on the part of the country you live in might work better but you can go out there like with the rye what you do you go out there when the rye is in the pollination stage you go out there and you go out there with a special crimper it's called a chevron roller it's got you know rollers that you know you got to use this chevron roll if you don't know it <clears throat> i'm going to post some link down in the description because um there's a universe or um i don't know if it's a university but it's not a university but it's a place out in pennsylvania it's called the rodale institute and they've been experimenting with this. They have videos on, on their website. You can watch or on YouTube. And they do this. They crimp the rye down. But you got to do it when it's in the pollination state. And then you go out there and you no-till your soybeans right into the rye. 
because if you don't do it when it's at that stage when the rise and the pollination, it won't kill it the crimping will kill it when it's in the pollination stage and you gotta it creates a mat on the ground very thick mat that will shade it out shade things out so that the weeds don't grow that's one option that you can do I know of a guy up here that he's experimented with it and he's had pretty good luck with it so otherwise if you don't do that when you do soybeans organic soybeans you pretty much got to as soon as you get them planted like two days after you plant them two or three days after you plant them you got to go out there with a rotary hole rotary home up and back and then you probably might even go out rotary home again after they come up but not them when it, not when they're in the coddales coddale stage um you know just when that little the cod tail is poke coming up. You don't want to do it then, and it'll snap them off. Probably when they got two or three leaves on them, then you could go out there again. And don't look back. You're gonna take some out, but plan at a higher rate or higher population. But don't look back when you do it because you know. Um, and then you're probably gonna have to cultivate them. And there's another thing that you can get too for for um, soybeans for weed control too is you can get thing called a weed zapper. Yeah, that only works when the soybeans are taller and the weeds are above it. it. It uses electricity to kill the weeds. Just look it up. Um, and then with the corn too, another thing that you can do for weed control, and this only works for broadleaf, is is a flamer. Yep, flamer. Look up flaming flaming organic corn. YouTube, you look it up on YouTube. You'll you'll watch it. You look all the stuff up on YouTube. You'll find it. We don't flame because we feel like we don't need to. It's an extra <clears throat> added expense, but it, it will only kill the broadleaf. You can do it when the corn first comes up, and you could do it when the corn is like like what you would normally when you would call it the second time. It's going to turn your corn white. <laughs> you might think, oh my God, Pete, your neighbors might think, oh my God, he killed his corn. No, it will grow because the growing point is, the difference with corn is the growing point is is, is on the stem. So you're going to kill the leaves, but the, the leaves will grow back. So don't worry about that. Um, you can't really flame your beans because they're broad leaves, so that won't work. So don't don't try it. Um, gosh, what else? Think of everything. There's so much to cover here, guys. I don't know. This is gonna be it's getting to be a long video, but um, um, yes. And cover crops. If you can at all costs, try to do cover cropping if you can. Um, like if you took your soybeans off, maybe like you could, maybe before you, um, like maybe in early August, depending on your region, maybe you should go out there and you could have airplanes come in and do a cover crop blend, maybe of clover, oats, tur turnips. It's good to have cover crops when you're organic. You know, we don't do it on, on all of our, or we don't do it every year. If it works out, we do it. We don't always do it because we don't have the money sometimes to do it. But if we can put a cover crop in, we will. Um, it's good to do it because you should have something growing in your soil until the ground freezes up. Not only that, but you don't want soil erosion. Like, you know, in the wintertime especially, you don't want the wind blowing your soil away. It's good if you can hold your soil down at all costs. And that's sometimes, some people give organic a bad rap because, oh, we're always working our ground up. You don't have to. You don't have to work your ground in the fall. You can do it in the spring. Yeah, it is more work. But if you can, try to do cover crops. If you can't afford it, <clears throat> do it. We, we've done it, you know, some some years we've done it. Some years we haven't. It just depends on if we can afford it and if it works out. Um, but go to that Rodale, Rodale, Rodale Institute um, website. I'll post a link down in the description to their website. There's other places. Um, is in the dairy too, with the organic dairy part of it. Um, there's the University of Minnesota Morris in Morris, Minnesota. They have an, a conventional or conventional herd and an organic herd. That they have two separate barns. They milk these cows to do a comparison on profitability and and health wise and things like that. I'm sure if you go to University of Minnesota Morris website, they have information on that. I'll see if maybe I can post something on the description down there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I tell you guys, there's a lot of information. This video so far is about 45 minutes long. <laughs> oh, another thing to check out. He's not organic, but he's the next thing close to it. Um, Gabe Brown, if you haven't heard of him, Google him. Go to his YouTube channel. 
He's a biological farmer. He lives up there by um, the capital of North Dakota. Why can't I think of the capital of North Dakota? Um, <coughs> for some reason. Boy, my brain is fried. It's, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, well, you know wherever the capital of North Dakota is. Well, I'm terrible. I can't think of the name of the capital of North Dakota. But he lives up in that area. So just look him up. Google him. Gabe Brown. G-A-B-E. You know, Brown. You know how to spell Brown. B-R-O-W and Brown. And, um, yep. He's, like you say, he, he, he still sprays herbicides. He doesn't plant GMOs or spray Roundup. But he's as close as you're going to get to organic. But he does all no-till. Um, he's got some organic matter in his soil that's 12% or even higher than that. Um, really high. He, did, he does everything no-till. He does intense cover cropping. Um, he he has, also has stock cow operations. It, Bismarck, Bismarck, North Dakota. If anybody knows Bismarck up that area, it is very, it's dry in that area. Um, he has really good luck with, because his organic matter, his levels are so high. And that's one thing in organic too. You want to get your organic matter levels up because that helps for soil, for holding moisture in your ground, for when it rains out, for drought. Um, work at that. Oh man, I don't know if I've covered everything here, guys. Oh, <clears throat> there's so much information. Um, yeah, I mean. That's kind of a lot of stuff. I'm I'm trying to cover a lot of stuff here that I know. Um, <clears throat> what else? Um, I'm gonna probably do a separate video for the dairy people because I know there's dairy people that are wondering how, you know, like maybe nutrition wise, maybe um, like health wise, how do we treat sick cows organically? I'm gonna do a separate video on that because that's a lot of information in itself. Um, you're, you're, right now, I'm going to tell you, organic farming is knowledge-intensive farming. It takes a lot of knowledge um, to do this. Um, like I said, we've had 16 years of experience under our belt, so we know, we know what we're doing. You guys have the advantage because there's so much more information available now than there was 16 years ago when we started. There's a lot more information available now. And... Um, a lot more resources out there. Um, you can do it. Thanks everybody for watching. Please like, rate, comment, and subscribe for more. And stay tuned for part four.